Hi, everybody. This is Allison from Allison Alley Cat Creations. How are you? I'm about 90% better. Still having issues. My back is killing me from, but I'm on the mend. Um, I cleaned out a lot today, sort of like just reconfiguring things. So for anybody that's on a zero budget, how to pack without all the packing material that you need to pack clothes. So I'm taking all my winter clothes because obviously it's summer. I'm not going to need it for a little bit um, to put all my winter clothes and all my little um, stuff that I'm taking that are fragile. I'm packing it up with that clothes. So I'm doing two in one. I'm packing clothes and stuff. Um, it's going to be annoying to unpack all of that once I figure out where the hell I'm going. But anyway, figured that would be advice. And for anybody that has gems and crystals, egg cartons, they work. Anyway, please hit that like button. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already and share because it's caring. And if you've gotten anything from my work, a mind-blowing moment, an epiphany, anything, connect the dot, please consider supporting my work. And it's more so a fund Allison moving party. Um, I'm going to very hard time period right now um unfortunately the can collecting machines were being fixed at the location that i usually go to so i i have to wait until tomorrow and pray that they're working i have to go to coinstar um because i can't find wrap rolls of of coin wrappers anywhere. And I don't want to keep driving around too much because gas is ridiculous. Yep. So that's where I'm at. So anything that you could contribute, it would be a blessing. So I'm going to make an attempt because I was able to do Manly P. Hall. It was really at the quite end difficult because I have a lot of issues going on with my mouth. Um, just teeth related that I'm not in pain. I don't have an infection that I know of, but my top teeth are really giving me an issue. Um, nothing I can do about it right now. So I'm trying not to worry about it, but it's affecting after a while how I project. So just want to put that out there. So I'm going to see if I don't get a migraine. The energies have calmed down. The Schumann resonance has calmed down enough for me to read. Oh, and before anybody comments, this is this is the New Jersey Devils. It's a hockey team. Um, it's, I watch hockey. Um, I did watch hockey. I follow hockey. Um, I don't have the capabilities of watching hockey, but they sucked the last two years and um, it don't matter. I like them. So it was, it got really humid and hot. We had a storm here earlier and I had to take my other shirt off and put something more comfy on. So anybody that suggests anything crazy, because mm -hmm. I, I watch my comments on, especially the other place that I post, and my goodness, 
You can criticize my work all you want. My makeup and me. I, I know where you're all going and it's not to a good place. Just be mindful. So I left off on stanza three, the last one, because this, this, the stanzas of like going through everything is very long. So I'm gonna do my best to get through a bunch more of The Secret Doctrine by Blavonsky. So stanza three, where was the germ and where was now darkness? Where is the spirit of the flame that burns in thy lamp? Oh, Leno, the germ is that and that is light. The white brilliant sun of the dark hidden father. The answers to the first question suggest by the second, which is the reply of the teacher to the pupil contains in a single phrase, one of the most essential truths of occult philosophy. It indicates that the existence of things impermissible to our physical senses, which are of a gr far greater importance, more real and more permanent than those that appeal to these senses themselves before the Lano can hope to understand the transcendental, transcendently metaphysical problem contained in the first question, he must be able to answer the second while the very first answer he gives to the second will furnish him with the clue to the correct reply to the first. In Sanskrit commentary on this stanza, the terms used for the concealed and the unrevealed principle are many in the earliest MSS. Of Indian literature, this unrevealed abstract deity has no name. It is called generally that, tad, in Sanskrit, and means all that is, was, and will be, or that can be so received by the human mind. Among such appellations, given, of course, only in esoteric philosophy as the unfathomable darkness, the world wind. It is also called the it of the Kalahash, Kalahansa, the Kalahamsa, and even the Kalihamsa, the black swan. Here the M and the N are convertible and both sound like the nasal French an or am or again in or m enu embrace as in the hebrew bible many of mysterious sacred name in sanskrit conveys to the profane ear no more than some ordinary and often vulgar world world word let's see because it is concealed anagrammatically or otherwise this word of hanza or esoterically Hamza is just such a case. Hamza is equal to a ha, a hamsa, three words meaning I am he in English. While divided in still another way, it will read soham, he is, I soham, being equal to sa, he, and aham, I, or I am he. In this alone is contained the universal mystery, the doctrine of the identity of man's essence with God's essence. For him who understands the language of wisdom, hence the glyph of the allegory about Kalahamza and the name given to Brahma, neuter, later on to the male Brahma of Hansa Vahana, he who gives the Hansa as his vehicle. The same word may be read. Kalahamsa, or I am I in the eternity of time, answering to the biblical or rather Zoroastrian, I am that I am. The same doctrine is found in the Kabbalah as witnessed the following extract from an unpublished MS by Mr. S. Liddell McGregor Mathers, the learned Kabbalist, the three pronouns, Ho Ata Anunai Anai, he, thou, I, 
are used to symbolize the ideas of macro propus and macro pro pro prosper. That's not gonna come out. In the Hebrew Kabbalah, ho he is applied to the hidden and concealed macro pro pus. You guys know what I'm talking about. Ata thou to macro ha, pro so pus and I and I I to the later that he is represented as speaking. It is also to be noted that each of the names consists of three letters, of which the letter alf, a form that conclusion of the first word ha ho a uh, ho. The commencement of the ata and anai, as if it were the connecting link between them. But, oh, I don't know what that symbol, the, the letter is. It's a Hebrew letter. It, it, I forgot what that is. Is the symbol of the unity and consequently of the unvarying idea of the divine operating through all these but behind that symbol in the name Ha are the letters, like I know Hebrew. I mean, I, whatever. The symbols of the names, no, the symbols of the numbers six and five, the male and the female, the hexagram and the pentagram, and the numbers of these three words, Ha, Ata, Anai, are 12, 406, and 61, which are which are resumed to the key numbers of 3, 10, and 7 by the Kabbalah of the nine chambers, which is a form of the exegetical, exegetical, again, can't get it out, rule of tomorrow. Sorry, guys. There's just some things that just are not gonna come out. It is useless to attempt to explain the mystery in full. Materialists and the men of modern science will never understand it since in order to obtain clear perception of it, one has first of all to admit to the postulate of the universality diffused omnipresent eternal deity in nature. Secondly, to have fathomed the mystery of the electricity in its true essence, and thirdly, to credit man with being the septentary symbol on the terrestrial plane of the one great unit, the Logos, which is itself the seven vowelled sign, the breath crystallized into the word. He who believes in all this has also to believe in the multiple combination of the seven planets of occultism and of the Kabbalah with the 12 zodiacal signs to attribute as we do to each planet and to each constellation and influence, which in the words of Ellie Starr, a French occultist, is proper to it, beneficent to beneficent or maleficent. And this after the planetary spirit, which rules it, who in his turn is capable of influencing men and things which are found in harmony with him and with which he has an infinity for these reasons. And since few believe in the foregoing, all that can now be given is that in both cases, the symbol of Hansa, whether I, he, goose or swan is an important symbol representing, for instance, divine wisdom, wisdom in darkness beyond the reach of men for all exoteric purposes, Hansa, as every Hindu knows, is a fabulous bird, which when given milk mixed with water for its food in the allegory, separated the two drinking the milk and leaving the water, thus showing inherent wisdom, milk standing symbolically for spirit and water for matter. That this allegory is very ancient and dates from the very earliest archaic period is shown by the mention in Bhagva Prauna, Prana, of a certain caste named Hamza or Hansa, which was the one caste per excellence. When far back in the midst of a forgotten past, there was among the Hindus only 
one Veda, one deity, one caste. There is also a range in the Himalayas described in the old books as being situated north of Mount Maru called Hamza and connected with the episodes pertaining to the history of religion, mysteries and initiations as to the name of Kala Hamza being the supposed vehicle of Brahma Parati in the exoteric texts and translations of the or Orient Orientalists, it is quite a mistake. Brahma the neuter is called by them Kala Hansa and Brahma the male Hansa Varana because forsooth his vehicle or Vahan is a swan or a goose. This is purely, purely exoteric gloss. Esoterically and logically, if Brahma the infinite is all that is described by the or Orientalists, namely agreeably with the Venic texts, an abstract deity in no way characterized by the description of any human attributes, and it is still maintained that he or it is called Kalahamza, that how can it ever become the Vahan of Brahma, the, manifest, the manifested finite God. It is quite the reverse. The swan or goose, Hamza, is a symbol of that male or temporary deity as he, the emanation of the primordial ray, is made to serve as a Vahan or vehicle for the divine ray, which otherwise could not manifest itself in the universe being anti-frantastical itself an emanation of darkness for our human intellect at any rate. It is Brahma, then, who is Kalahansa, and the ray, the Hansa Vahana. As to the strange symbol chosen, it is equally suggestive that the true mystic significance being the idea of the universal matrix figured by the primordial waters of the deep or uh, opening for the reception and subsequently for the issue of that one ray, the logos, which contains in itself the other seven pro-creative rays or powers, the logi or builders. Hence the choice by the Rosicruz of the aquatic fowl, whether swan or pelican, with seven young ones for a symbol modified and adapted to, to the religion of every country. And so is called the fury soul of the pelican in the book of numbers, the hidden deity and its symbols and glyphs appearing with every Manvarata or my Marian or Swamabhuvava self-existent and penetrating into the mundane egg, it emerges from it at the end of the divine incubation as Brahma or Parati, a progenitor of the future universe into which he expands. He is Purusha spirit, but he is also Parati matter. Therefore, it is only after separating himself into two halves, Brahma Vak, the female, and Brahma Rai, the male, that the par Pariyapti becomes the male Brahma. Oh my goodness, guys. Light is cold flame and flame is fire. And the fire produces heat, which yields water, the water of life in the great mother, chaos. It must be remembered that the words light, fire and flame used in the stanzas have been adopted by the translators thereof for the vocabulary of the old fire philosophers in order to render better the meaning of the archaic terms and symbols employed in the original. Otherwise they would have remained entirely untangible to the European reader. But to a student of the occult, the terms used will be significantly clear. All these light, flame, hot, cold, fire, heat, water, and the water of life, are all on our plane, the progeny, or as a modern physicist would say, the correlations of electricity, mighty word, and a still mightier symbol. 
sacred generator of a no less sacred progeny of fire, the creator, the preserver and the destroyer of light, the essence of our divine ancestors of flame, the soul of things, electricity, the one life at the upper rung of being, and astral fluid, the enthor of the alchemists at its lowest, God and devil, good and evil. Now, why is light called in the stanzas cold flame? Because in the order of cosmic evolution as taught by the occultists, the energy that actuates matter after its first formation into atoms is generated on our plane by cosmic heat. And because cosmos, in the sense of dissociated matter, was not before that period, the first primordial matter, eternal, and covil with space would have neither a beginning nor an end, is neither hot nor cold, but is of its own special nature, says the commentary in book two. Heat and cold are relative qualities and pertain, and pertain to the realms of the manifested worlds, which are preceded from the manifested hal, which in its absolute latent aspect is referred to as the cold virgin and which are awakened to life as the mother. The ancient Western cosmogic myths state that at first there was but cold mist, which was the father and prolific slime, the mother's alus or heil, from which crept forth the mundane snake, mat snake matter, Isis, primordial matter, before it emerges from the plane of the never manifesting and awakes to the thrill of action under the impulsive faux hat is but a cold radiance, colorless, formless, tasteless, and devoid of every quality and aspect. Even such as, even such are her firstborn, the four sons who are one and become seven. The entities by whose qualifications and names ancient Eastern occultists called the four of the seven primal centers of forces or atoms that develop later into the great cosmic elements now divided into the 70 or so sub elements known to science. The four primal natures of the first Diane Kohans are the so-called for what of the better terms, acoustic, ethereal, watery, and fiery answering in the terminology of practical occultism to scientific definitions of gases, which to convey a clear idea to both cultists and laymen must be defined as parahydronic, parahydrogenic, paraoxygenic, ox hydrogenic, and ozonic, or perhaps nitro or zonic, the later forces are gases in occultism, super sensuous, yet atomic substances, but the, being the most effective and active when energizing on the plane of more grossly dif differentiated matter. These are both electro positive and electro negative. Pretty interesting. Father, mother, spin a web whose upper end is fastened to spirit. The light of the one darkness and the lower one to matter. Its shadowy end and this web is a universe spun out of two substances made in one, which is Swabhavat. Another Sanskrit word I can't pronounce. <sighs> In the Manduka Mundaka Upishad, it is written as a spider throws out and retracts its web as herbs springing up in the ground. So the universe derived from the unde undecaying one. Brahma, as the germ of the unknown darkness, is the material form 
which all evolves and develops as the web from the spider as formed from the water. This is only graphic and true if Brahma, the creator, is at as a term derived from the root bri, bra, to increase and expand. Brahma expands and becomes a universe woven out of his own substance. The same idea that has been beautifully expressed by Goethe, who says, Quote, thus at the roaring loom of time I ply, and we for God the garment thou seest him, him by, end quote. It, the web, expands when the breath of fire, the father, is upon it. It contracts when the breath of the mother, the, rot, the root of matter, touches it. Then the sons, the elements with their respective powers or intelligences, disassociate and scatter to return into their mother's bosom at the end of the great day and be re-become one with her. When it, the web, is cooling, it becomes radiant. Its sons expand and contract through their own selves and hearts. They embrace infinitude. The expanding of the universe under the breath of fire is very suggestive in the end of the fire mist, period of which modern science speaks so much and knows in reality so little. Great heat breaks up the compound elements and resolves the heavenly bodies into their primeval one element, explains the commentary. One disintegrated into its primal constitute by giving within the attraction and reach of a focus or center of heat energy of which many are carried about to and fro in space. A body which alive or dead will be vaporized and held in the bosom of the mother until Fohat gathering a few of the clusters of cosmic matter nebulae will by giving it an impulse set it in motion anew, develop the required heat, and then leave it to follow its new growth. The expanding and contracting of the web, the world stuff or atoms expressed here, the pulsary movement, or it is the regular contraction and expansion of the infinite and shoreless ocean of that which we may call the nominum of matter emulated by Swaba which causes the universal vibration of atoms, but is also suggestive of something else. It shows that the ancients were acquainted with that which is now the puzzle of many scientists and especially of astronomers. The cause of the first ignition of matter or the world stuff, the paradox of the heat produced by the refrigerative contraction and other such cosmic riddles. For it points unmistakably to a knowledge by the ancients of such phenomena. There is heat eternal and heat external in every atom, says the manuscript commentaries to which the writer had access. The breath of the father or spirit and the breath or heat of the mother matter. And they give explanations which show that the modern theory of extinction of the solar fires by loss of heat through radiation is erroneous. The assumption is false, even as a scientist's own omission. For a professor Newcomb points out, popular astronomy, by losing heat, a gaseous body contracts, and the heat generated by the contraction exceeds that which it had to lose in order to produce the contraction. This paradox that a body gets hotter as the shrinking produced by its getting colder is greater, led to long disputes. The surplus of heat, it was argued, was lost by radiation and assumed that the temperature is not lowered, para prosu, with a decrease of volume under a constant pressure. It is to set a not the law of Charles Nebular theory, Winchell. Contraction develops heat, it is true, but contraction from cooling is incapable of developing the whole amount of heat at any time existing in the mass, or even of maintaining a body at a constant temperature. Professor Wilchell tries to reconcile the paradox only a seeming one, in fact, as Homer lands 
proved by suggesting something besides heat. May it not be, he asks, simply a repulsion among the molecules, which varies according to some law of the distance. But even this will be found irre irreconceivable unless this something besides heat is ticketed. Causeless heat, the breath of fire, the all creative force, plus absolute intelligence, which physical science is not likely to accept. However, it may be the reading of the stanza shows it's notwithstanding its archaic phraseology to be more scientific than even modern science. Well then. Then Svabat sends Fohat to harden the atoms. Each of these is a part of the web universe, reflecting the self-existent Lord primeval light. Like a mirror, each comes in turn a world. Fohat hardens the atoms by infusing energy into them. He scatters the atoms or primordial matter. He scatters himself while scattering matter into atoms. It is through Fohat that the ideas of the universal mind are impressed upon matter. Some faint idea of nature of Fohat may be gathered from the appellation cosmic electricity sometimes applied to it, but the commonly known properties of electricity must in this case be added others, including intelligence. It is of interest to note that modern science has come to the conclusion that all celebration and brain activity are attended by electrical phenomena. We're going to start stanza four. Listen, ye sons of the earth, to your instructors, the sons of the fire. Learn there is neither first nor last, for all is one number issued from no number. These terms, the sons of the fire, the sons of the fire mist, and the like require explanation. They are connected with a great and primordial and universal mystery, and it is not easy to make it clear. There is a passage in the Bhagavad Gita, wherein Krishna, speaking symbolically and esoterically, says, I will state the times conditions at which devotees departing from this life do so never to return, be reborn, or to return the incarnate again. The fire, the flame, the day, the bright, lucky fortnight, the six months of the northern solstice, departing, dying. In these, those who know the Brahman, yogis, go to the Brahman. Smoke, night, the dark, unlucky, fortnight, the six months of the southern solstice, dying in these, the devotee goes to the lunar light or mansion, the astral light also and return is reborn. Those two paths, bright and dark, are said to be eternal in the world, or great Kapla, age. By the one, a man goes ne never to come back, by the other he returns. Now these names, fire, flame, day, the bright fortnight, a smoke night, and so on, leading only to the end of the lunar path, are incomprehensible without a knowledge of esotericism. These are all names of various deities which preside over the cosmic, cosmo psychic powers. We often speak of the hierarchy of flames, of the sons of fire. Sankara Churya, the greatest of the esoteric masters of India, says the fire means a deity which presides over time. The able translator of Ba. Bhagavad Gita, Kashinath, Timbak, Taleg, M.A. of Bombay confesses he has no clear notion of the meaning of these verses. It seems quite clear, on the contrary, to him who knows the occult doctrine. With these verses, the mystic sense of the solar and lunar symbols are connected. The pitris 
or lunar deities and other ancestors because they created the physical man. The Angishwatha and Kumara, the seven mystic sages or solar deities through the former or Pitrus also, and these are the fashioners of the inner man. They are the sons of fire because they are the first beings in the secret doctrine. They are called minds, evolved from primordial fire. The Lord is consuming fire, Deuteronomy. The Lord, Christos, shall be revealed with his mighty angels in flaming fire. The Holy Ghost descended on the apostles like cloven tongues of fire. Vishnu will return on Kaliki, the white horse on the last avatar amid fire and flames. And so she will be brought down equally on a white horse in a tornado of fire. And I saw heaven open and behold a white horse. And he that sat upon him is called the word of God. Amid flaming fire, fire is ether in its purest form and hence it is not regarded as matter but it is the unity of ether the second manifestation deity in its universality but there are two fires and a distinction is made between them in the occult teachings the first are purely formless and invisible fire concealed in the central spiritual sun is spoken of as triple metaphysically while the fire of the manifested cosmos is cemetery throughout both the universe and our solar system. The fire or knowledge burns up all action on the plane of illusion, says the commentary. Therefore, those who have acquired it and are em emancipated are called fires. Speaking of the seven senses symbols symbolized as Polaris, priest of the Brahma, says that I can't make Anugita. Sorry, guys, it's in um, fancy font. Thus, these seven senses, smell and taste and color and sound, are the cause of in emancipation. And the commenter adds, it is from these seven from which the self is to be emancipated. I am here devo devoid of qualities must mean the self, not the Brahma who speaks. The expression all is one number issued from no number relates again that the universal and philosophical tenet just explained in stanza three, that which is absolute is of course no number, but its later significance it has application in space in time. It means that not only every increment of time is part of a larger increment up to the most indefinitely prolonged duration conceived, conceivable by the human intellect, but also that no manifested things can be thought of except as part of a larger whole. The total aggregate being the one manifested universe that issues from the unmanifested or absolute called not non-being or no number is distinguished from being or the one number. Learn what we who descend from the primordial seven, we who are born from the primordial flame have learned from our fathers. This is explained in book two and this name primordial flame collaborates what is said in the first paragraph of the preceding commentary on stanza four. The distinction between the primordial and the subsequent seven builders is this. The former are the ray and direct emanation of the first sacred four, the tetrachis, that is eternally self-existent, one, eternal, in essence, note well, not in manifestation and distinct from the universal one, latent during the prialaya and active during manavatra, the primordial proceed from father, mother, spirit, hail, or us, whereas the other manifested quantitary and the seven proceed from the mother alone. It is the latter who is immaculated virgin mother who is overshadowed and not impregnated by the universal mystery 
when she emerges from her state of Laya or undifferentiated condition. In reality, they are of course all one, but their aspects on the various planes of being are different. The first primordial are the highest beings on the scale of existence. They are the archangels of Christianity, those who refuse as Michael did in the later system and as did the eldest mind-born sons of Brahma to create rather than multiply. Very interesting. From the euphigy of light, the ray of the ever darkness sprung in space, the reawakened energies, the one from the egg, the six and the five, then the three, the one. The four, the one, the five, the twice seven, the sum total, and these are the essence, the flame, the elements, the builders, the numbers, the aura, the rupa, and the force or divine man, the sum total. And from the divine man emanated the forms, the sparks, the sacred animals, and the messengers of the sacred fathers within the holy four. This relates to the sacred science of the numerals. So sacred indeed, and so important in the study of occultism that the subject can hardly be skimmed even in such a large work at the present. It is on the hierarchies and correct numbers of these beings invisible to us, except upon very rare occasions, that the mystery of the whole universe is built. The Kumaras, for, ex for instance, are called the four, through in reality seven in number, because Senka, Senanda, Santana, and Santa Kumara are the chief Vadavetra, their patriomic name, as they spring from the fourfold mystery. To make the whole clearer, we have to turn from our il illustrations to tenets more familiar to some of our readers, namely the Brahmanical. According to Manu, yeah, exactly. Haranya Garba, again, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to butcher these names by disrespect, is Brahma, the first male formed by the undiscernible causeless cause in a golden egg, resplendent as the sun, as states the Hindu classic di dictionary. Hiren Yagarbha means the golden or rather the euphigent womb or egg. The meaning tallies awkwardly with the epithet of male. Surely the esoteric meaning of the sentence is clear enough. In the Rig Veda, the Rig Veda, it is said that the one Lord of all beings, the one animating principle of God and man arose in the beginning in the golden womb, which is the mundane egg or sphere of our universe. That being is surely androgynous and the allegory of Brahma separating into two and recreating in one of his halves, the female Vak, himself Varaji, is a proof of it. The one from the egg, the six and the five, give the number 1065, the value of the firstborn, later on the male and female Brahma Paravati, who answers to the number seven and 14 and 21 respectively. The Paravati are like the Sifaroth, only seven, including the synthetic Sifra of the triad from which they sprang. Thus from Hyan Gurubara or Parajip, par Harja Parati, the triune, emanate the other seven or again 10 if we separate the first three from exit in one and one in three all moreover being comprehended within that one supreme parama called Guya or secret and Svartama, the super soul. 
the seven lords of being lie concealed in Sarvamatta. I am really sorry, guys. This is actually extremely frustrating. Like thoughts in one brain. So are the Sephiroth. It is either seven when counting from the upper triad headed by Kether or 10 ex exoterically. In the Mahabharata, the Parapajati are 21 in number or 10, six and five, thrice seven. And it's getting huge. The three, the one, the four, the one, the five, and their totality twice seven represents 31,415, the numerical hierarchy of the Dian Kohans of various orders in the inner or circumscribed world. When placed on the boundary of the great circle of Pass Not, called also Dian Paza, the rope of the angels, the rope that hedges off the phenomenal from the noumenal cosmos, not falling within the range of our present objective consciousness. This number, when not enlarged by permutation and expansion, is ever 31,415, anagrammatically and kabbalistically, being both the number of the circle and the mystic Skavatskia. The twice seven, one more, for whatever set, whatever way the two sets of figures are counted, when added separately one figure after another, whether crossways from right or from left, they will always yield 14. Mathematically, they represent the well-known calculation, namely the ratio of the diameter to the circumference of a circle is as one, two, three point one four one five, or the value of pi as a ratio is called the symbol pi being always used in mathematical formulae to express it. The set of figures must have the same meaning since the one thirty four thousand wait. 314,159, and then again, 13, are worked out in the secret calculations and expression, various cycles and ages of the firstborn with fractions and yield the same 13,415 by a process we are not concerned with at present. And it may be shown that Mr. Ralston Skinner, author of The Source of Measures, reads the Hebrew word alhim in the same number value, omitting, as said, the ciphers and the permutation 313,514. Okay, and there's a bunch of letters I cannot pronounce because they're all in Hebrew and I don't know what those singular ones are. So I'm going to skip. So I do apologize. Thus, while in the metaphysical world, the circle with the one central point in it has no number and is called Anupokat Padaka, parentless and numberless, it can fall under no calculation in the manifested world, the mundane egg or circle is circumscribed within the groups called the line, the triangle, the pentacle, the second line, and the cube. And when the point having generated a line, thus becoming a diameter, which stands for the androgynous, androgynous, I got it, logos, then the figures become 314,000, wait, 31,415, or a triangle, a line, a cube, the second line, and a pentacle. When the son separates from the mother, he becomes the father the diameter standing for nature or the feminine principle. Therefore, it is said in the world of being, the one point fructifies the line, the virgin matrix of cosmos, the egg-shaped zero, and the immaculate mother gives birth to the form that combines all forms. Paramurati is called the first procreating male and his mother's husband. 
This gives a keynote to all the later divine sons from the Immaculate Mothers. It is greatly corroborated by the significant fact that Anna, this name of the mother of the Virgin Mary, now represented by the Roman Catholic Church as having given birth to her daughter in the Immaculate Way, Mary conceived without sin, is derived from the Chaldean Anna, heaven, or Astraelite, Anima Mundi, whence Ananita Devi Dugra, the wife of Shiva, is also called Anna Pruna. The Kenya, the virgin, Uma Kenya, being her esoteric name and meaning the virgin of light, astral light in the one of the multitudinous aspects. The Devas, Pretis, Rishis, the Suras and the Asuras, the Dayatas and Adiyas, the Devan, what the fuck? Dayanvas and Grand Viharas have all their synonyms in our sacred doctrine, as well as in the Kabbalah and the Hebrew allegory and again, angelology. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but it is useless to give their ancient names as it would only create confusion. Many of these may be also found now, even in the Christian hierarchy of divine and celestial powers. All those thrones and dominions, virtues and principalities, cherubs, seraphims, demons, the various denzines of the side real world are the modern copies of archaic prototypes. The very symbolism in their names, their trans, transliteral and arranged in Greek and Latin are sufficient to show it as well be proved in several cases further on. The sacred animals are found in the Bible as well as in the Kabbalah, and they have their meaning, a very profound one too, on the page of the origins of life. In the Sephra Jizra, it is stated that God engraved in the holy four the throne of his glory, the Oraphim, the wheels, or the world spheres, the Seraphim, the sacred animals, and the ministering angels from these three, the air, water, and fire, or ether, he formed his habitation. Thus was the world made through three seraphim, Sefer, Safer, Sifer, Sipper, or through number, numbers, and numbered. With the astronomical key, these sacred animals become the signs of the zodiac. So guys, I'm going to leave it there. I hope you enjoyed. I got some garbage I have to put out and it's getting really late. So. I'm going to pick up on stanza four and then the fourth stanza. I do apologize. I am not here to disrespect anybody's religion or language. There's just a lot of things I can't get out. Sending each and every one of you love and light. Again, if you can help me out with a donation or supporting my work in any way, shape or form that'd be greatly appreciated sending you much love and light please be safe out there and i'll see you on the next one bye